Hello everyone, welcome to this greatest course on MLOps. In this course, we will learn how to master MLOps, like as the title suggests, mastering MLOps from development to deployment. So why should you join this course? There are there are some other course also available. What are the features that makes my course unique? So are you interested in mastering the art of machine learning operations? Our comprehensive MLOps course is designed to equip you with the necessary skills to manage and streamline your machine learning pipelines from development to deployment. In this course, you will learn the principle of MLOps not only but also including continuous integration and continuous delivery, how to manage data, how to perform model versioning and monitoring. You will also gain like practical experience using industry standard tools like Docker and Kubernetes. Whether are you, you are a seasoned data scientist or beginner in the field, this course will provide you the skills, will knowledge and you need to succeed in the rapidly evolving world of machine learning. Enroll now and take the first step towards becoming an expert in MLOps. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome. This is the course overview. Here is a detailed overview of the MLOps course. First point, introduction to machine learning and its application. Like what are the machine learning applications that we will use in the industry today? What are the different phases of machine learning in development? How to prepare data, how to perform feature engineering and how to select a model like in regression whether we select the linear regression or decision tree regression how to take a decision on that the fourth point is building and training machine learning model using popular frameworks such as tensorflow and its sub framework like Keras, pytorch and scikit-learn with like scikit-learn are used for machine learning while pytorch and tensorflow are used for deep learning Next, we will learn about hyperparameter tuning, model evaluation, and interpretation. We will also look at the deployment of ML models in various environments such as cloud platform, on premises, server, and edge devices. Containerization, virtualization, and DevOps practices for ML. How to use popular tools and platforms such as Docker, Kubernetes, AWS, Azure, GCP to manage and deploy ML models, how to perform monitoring, how to perform scaling, versioning of ML models in production, and how to know best practices for managing and maintaining ML models in production, and how to keep the principles about security, governance, and compliance in mind. So, so by the end of the course, the students or participants will have gained the skills and knowledge needed to manage and deploy ML models in production environment, making them equipped to handle real-world problems. Thank you. Hello, welcome. In this video, we will study about the huge cases of MLOps. Like MLOps is important because it helps every organization to manage and deploy machine learning models in production environments effectively. Here is an example to illustrate the importance of MLOps. Let's say a company has developed an ML model to predict customer churn. The data science team has tested the model on a small data set and achieved high accuracy. The company decides to deploy the model to the production to start predicting customer churn. Like customer churn is all about whether an employee customer will uh, persist or not persist with, with the company and reduce customer attrition rate. However, after deployment, the model is not performing as expected and the company starts losing customer. This is the huge case of MLOps. This is where MLOps comes in. With MLOps, the data science team can monitor the performance of the model in production and identify issues early on 
they can collect and analyze data from various sources such as application logs, user feedback, performance metrics, and use this information to make data-driven decisions on how to improve the model's performance. For example, the data science team or ML ops team might discover that model's performance deteriorates when it encounters a specific type of data or that the model is not properly calibrated for certain parameters. They can use this information to update the model, retrain it and redeploy it to production all while maintaining high level of reliability, scalability and performance. Next, without MLOps, the data science team would have to manually identify issues in production, make changes to the model and redeploy it which could make a lot of time and effort. This could result in lost revenue and reduced customer satisfaction as the company would not be able to predict customer churn accurately. So what we can summarize is that MLOps is important because it enables organizations to manage and deploy ML models in production environments effectively, identifying issues early on and make data driven decisions to improve the model's performance. This is turn can help organizations reduce cost, increase revenue, and get, gain a competitive advantage in the industry. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we will talk about the steps of a machine learning project. So following are the typical steps involved in machine learning. The first step is to define the problem. In the first step, we know we want to know that what the problem is, like what we are trying to predict. Second step is to gather and to clean data. And we scrape the data from various websites or we collect the data through database or various APIs. Next step is data exploration and visualization. In this step, we visualize various graphs through Seaborn or Matplotlib. Feature engineering like in, the, in this step we select a subset of features that are most important to our problem. Next model selection and training we select a model from the given one and we train the data on it. Next it model evaluation and tuning. We find the various parameters like errors and its accuracy to evaluate it and we tune its hyperparameters. The last phase is deployment phase. Uh, we, now we will look at the broad overview like what we use defining a problem. The first step is to define the problem you want to solve with ML. This involves identifying the business problem defining the objectives and determining the data you need to solve the problem. Like for example, suppose you are working for an e-commerce company and the business problem is to predict whether customers are likely to churn. Second step is gather and clean data. The next step is to gather and clean the data you need for the project. This involves acquiring data from various sources, cleaning and processing the data and preparing it for the analysis. Like example, you gather data on customer demographics, purchase history and website behavior and social media interactions. Third step is data exploration and visualization. The third step is to explore the data and visualize it to gain insights and identify patterns. This involves using statistical analysis, data visualization techniques and exploratory data analysis to gain a better understanding of the data. You can think it as like you use scatter plot, histograms, and other visualization tools to identify correlations between different variables and identify potential predictors of customer churn. The fourth step is feature engineering. In the feature engineering steps, we identify the most important features from the data that can be used to train the machine learning model. This involves selecting the most relevant features transforming and scaling the data and encoding categorical variables. 
like you engineer features such as customer age purchase frequency and product categories and social media engagement the fifth step is like model selection and training in this step we try to find an appropriate ml algorithm and train the model on this data this involves splitting the data into training and testing sets selecting the appropriate ml algorithm and training the model on the training set example you selected classification algorithm like logistic regression random forest or train the model on the training set next is model evaluation and tuning the sixth step is to evaluate the performance of model and tune its hyperparameters to improve its accuracy this involves using evaluation metrics such as accuracy precision recall or to assess the model performance and adjusting the hyperparameters to optimize its performance example you evaluate the model performance using metrics such as accuracy precision recall and adjust its hyperparameters to improve its performance the seventh and final pillar of the this process is deployment in the deployment phase we deploy the model into production and we integrate it with the existing systems monitor its performance this involves deploying the model into a production environment how to create an api for the model monitoring its performance in real time you deploy the model into the company's customer relationship management system and use it to predict customer churn in real time in some way these are the typical steps involved in a machine learning project which includes defining the problem gathering and cleaning data exploring the data visualizing data feature engineering model training and evaluating hyperparameter tuning and deploying the model in production thank you so we will study the what are the key challenges in ml ops or machine learning operations here are some key challenges in ml ops data management model selection model training and tuning deployment monitoring and maintenance collaboration and governance and compliance these are the seven challenges that i will be discussing more there can be much more challenges you can refer them through the internet about them but these seven are the most important challenges first is data management managing and storing large volume of data required for machine learning can be a challenging task the data needs to be properly labeled and notated and maintained to ensure that is of high quality like we can we can interpret that only high quality data can predict good values model selection selecting an appropriate ml algorithm and architecture for a specific problem can be difficult like when you study the different type of ml algorithm it become cumbersome for the student to, to like like which algorithm to select there are many different algorithms available and selecting the right one can give a significant impact on the performance of model model training and tuning training a model can be resource intensive sim task that requires large amount of computing power and time tuning hyperparameters to optimize the performance of the model can also be a challenging and time consuming task next point is deployment deploying a model into production also have challenges it have challenges due to its complexity of the infrastructure required to host and serve the model ensuring about model deployed in a reliable in a scalable manner can be difficult monitoring and maintenance once a model is deployed it needs to be monitored and maintained to ensure that it continues to perform well this involves monitoring for issues such as data drift and retraining the model as necessary next is collaboration developing and deploying ml model often needs collaboration across multiple teams including data science data engineers developers operation teams project lead business analyst all of that ensuring that these teams can work together effectively can be a challenge the next point is governance and compliance machine learning models may be subject to various regulations and compliance requirements 
such as GDPR and HIPAA. Ensuring that the models are developed and deployed in the compliance with these regulations can be a challenge. So, we can summarize all of the seven points in this way. Like the key challenges in MLOps include data management, model selection, training and tuning. These are the primary challenges. Net, next, deployment, monitoring, maintenance, collaboration and governance and how to compliance with them thank you that's it for the video hello and welcome in this video we will talk about deployment patterns in mlops here are some common deployment patterns in mlops like batch processing stream processing what is containerization serverless deployment deployment with microservices and hybrid cloud what is batch processing? In this pattern, we, the ML model processes large amounts of data in a batch mode. Like we can, uh, we can process all the available data at once, or we can uh, train the ML model on small small batches of data. The data is collected and processed in discrete batches at regular intervals. The opposite of batch processing is stream processing. What happens in stream processing? In stream processing, the machine learning model processes data in real time. Like as data comes in, it is processed. Like we can we can establish a trigger point. Like after two seconds, we want to trigger the pipeline. After four seconds or after five hundred millisecond, we want to trigger it. The data is collected and processed in a continuous stream in stream processing. Next point is containerization. Containerization involves packaging the machine learning model and its dependencies into a container, like such as Docker. This allows for easy deployment and scaling of the model. Serverless. In a serverless deployment pattern, the machine learning model is deployed as a function that is triggered by an event. This allows for automatic scaling and can reduce operational cost. The fifth is microservices. In microservices pattern, the machine learning model is deployed as a microservice that can be accessed by other services within a large application architecture. This allows for flexibility and scalability. Next is hybrid cloud. In a hybrid cloud deployment pattern, the machine learning model is deployed across both on-premises and cloud-based infrastructure. This allows for greater flexibility and control over the deployment environment. Deployment patterns in MLOps. So what we can summarize is there are several deployment patterns that can be used in MLOps including batch processing, stream processing, containerization, serverless, microservices and hybrid cloud. The choice of deployment pattern will depend on the specific needs and requirements of the machine learning project. Thank you and have a good day. Hello everyone, welcome in the video. In this video, we will discuss about monitoring. So what is monitoring? Monitoring in MLOps refers to the process of tracking the performance of a deployed machine learning model and ensuring that it continues to meet the required level of accuracy and reliability. Next, some key points that are related to monitoring in machine learning operations or machine learning engineering in production are metrics, data drift, model drift, anomaly detection, alerts, and logging. The first point is metrics. So metrics are used to track the performance of the model. Common metrics used in MLOps include accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score. These are used for classification problem. For regression problem, we use other matrices. So next point is data drift. Data drift is important point in MLOps. Data drift refers to changes in the distribution of the data used to train a machine learning model. Data drift can occur due to variety of reasons 
such as changes in the business environment, changes in user behavior or changes in the data collection process. There are different types of data drift such as concept drift, seasonal drift, covariate drift and outlier drift. We will explain these four types of data drift. These four as its different meanings and like the first is concept drift. So concept drift occurs when the relationship between the input and output variable changes over time. Like it is similar to like modular drift. We will discuss it further in the upcoming slides. Next is seasonal drift. So in seasonal drift, it occurs when there are changes in the data patterns over different seasons or time periods. Next is covariant shift. It occurs when the distribution of input variable changes over time. Next is outlier shift. It occurs when the distribution of data is affected by outliers. Data drift can affect the performance of machine learning models. As the model is no longer optimized for the new distribution of data. To address data drift, it is important to monitor the performance of the machine learning model over time. And we can also regularly re-evaluate the model's accuracy on new data. Strategies for addressing data drift can include retraining the model on updated data or using a statistical technique to detect changes in the data distribution. That's all about data drift. We can summarize data drift like data drift occurs when the data used to train the model is different from the data used in production. Monitoring for data drift is important to ensure that the model continues to perform well over time. That's all about data drift. Next is model drift. So what is model drift? Model drift refers to the changes in the machine learning model itself over time. So when the mapping of input to output variables or input to output features changes over time, it is known as model drift. Model drift can occur due to a variety of reasons such as changes in the business requirement, changes in the data used to train the model or change in the performance of the underlying algorithm. So you can see from the both of the two definitions that data drift and model drift is a closely related concepts. Model drift can result in a decrease in the accuracy of the model or other issues such as false positive or false negative. To address model drift, it is important to regularly reevaluate the model's performance on new data and make updates to the model as necessary. Strategies for addressing model drift can include retraining the model on updated data, fine tuning the model's parameter, or updating the model architecture. Regularly monitoring the model performance can help detect model drift early and allow for timely adjustment or we can say like model drift can also be caused by changes in the business environment or other external factors so it's important to consider these factors when evaluating the model's performance model drift can occur in any type of machine learning model including supervised learning unsupervised learning or reinforcement learning Next, like how to avoid model drift. So, to minimize model drift, it is important to establish a rigorous testing and validation process and to regularly update the model based on new data and business requirements. Addressing model drift is an ongoing process as the business environment and the data are constantly changing and the model needs to be adaptive to these changes to ensure that it continues to provide accurate predictions. So we can summarize model drift as model drift occurs when the performance of the model decreases over time. This can happen due to changes in data distribution or due to changes in underlying business requirement. That's all about model drift. Next point is anomaly detection. 
Anomaly detection involves monitoring the input and output of machine learning model for unexpected behavior. This can help to detect issues such as correct input data or unexpected output. Next is alerts. Alerts can be set up to notify stakeholders when issues are detected. This allows for quick remediation of issues and can help to prevent further problems from occurring. And in last weekend, we study about logging to monitor the ML. Logging can be used to capture information about the performance of the model over time. This can be used to identify trends and to diagnose issues when they occur. So in summary, monitoring is a critical component of MLOps. It involves tracking the performance of the model, detecting issues such as data drift, model drift. We studied four types of data drift in that like we studied concept drift, we studied about seasonal drift, we studied about covariance drift, we studied about outlier drift. And monitoring also includes setting up alerts and logging to ensure that the issues are quickly remediated. That's all for the video. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to the video. In this video, we will talk about pipeline monitoring. Pipeline monitoring in MLOps or machine learning operations involves monitoring the end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline like from the data collection phase or problem definition phase to deployment phase. Here are some key points related to pipeline monitoring in MLOps. The first point is data quality monitoring. Second point is model training monitoring. Third point is model testing and deployment monitoring. Four point is infrastructure monitoring. Fifth point is logging and alerting. Six point is model retraining. Data quality monitoring. It is important to monitor the quality of data as it flows through the pipeline. This includes monitoring for data completeness, accuracy, consistency and timeliness. Data quality monitoring is a critical component of MLOps. As the quality of data used to train and test machine learning models can significantly impact their accuracy and reliability. Data quality monitoring involves monitoring the data used in machine learning pipeline including the data used to train the model as well as the data used to evaluate the model's performance. Data quality monitoring can help identify issues such as missing data, data inconsistencies, data duplication or data errors that can impact the accuracy of the model. There are various techniques and tools available for data quality monitoring including data profiling, data validation, data cleansing and data enrichment. Data profiling involves analyzing the data to identify patterns, relationships and other characteristics that can provide insight into the quality of data. Data validation involves testing the data to ensure that it meets predefined criteria such as data completeness, data accuracy and data consistency. Data cleansing involves removing or correcting any errors or inconsistencies in the data that can affect the accuracy of the model. Data enrichment involves adding additional information to the data to improve its quality and accuracy. Data monitoring should also be targeted integrated into the machine learning pipeline and should be automated to ensure that it is performed consistently and effectively. Effective data quality monitoring can improve the accuracy and reliability of machine learning models, reduce the risk of errors and biases and ultimately lead to better business solutions. Next phase is model training monitoring. During model training, it is important to monitor the performance of model on the training data and to validate the model on the validation data 
to ensure that it is not overfitting. Model testing and deployment monitoring. Once the model has been deployed, it is important to monitor its performance in the production to ensure that it is working as expected. This involves monitoring the input and output of the model, tracking key metrics such as accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Next is infrastructure monitoring. The infrastructure used to deploy the machine learning pipeline should be monitored to ensure that it is running correctly and is scalable. This includes monitoring the CPU and memory usage of infrastructure as well as network bandwidth and latency. Some important points about network infrastructure monitoring is M in MLOps are as following. Infrastructure monitoring is a critical component of MLOps as it ensures that the underlying infrastructure supporting the machine learning pipeline is performing optimally. Infrastructure monitoring involves monitoring the hardware and software components used in the machine learning pipeline including servers, storage, networking and databases. Infrastructure monitoring can help identify issues such as hardware failure, network congestion, database performance issues or software errors that can impact the performance and reliability of the machine learning pipeline. There are various techniques and tools available for infrastructure monitoring including log analysis, performance monitoring and fault detection. Log analysis involves analyzing system logs to identify issues or errors that can affect the performance of machine learning pipeline. Performance monitoring involves tracking key performance indicators such as response time, latency, and throughput to ensure that the infrastructure is performing optimally. Fault detection involves detecting and responding to system failures such as server crashes or network outages to minimize downtime and to ensure that the pipeline continues to operate. Infrastructure monitoring should be integrated into the machine learning pipeline and should be automated to ensure that the issues are detected and addressed in a timely manner. Effective infrastructure monitoring can improve the readability and availability of the machine learning pipeline, reduce the risk of downtime and data loss, and ultimately lead to better business outcomes. Continuous monitoring and analysis of infrastructure data can also provide insights into system usage and performance trends which can also be used to optimize the infrastructure and improve the efficiency of machine learning pipeline so the whole summary of the this was used to that infrastructure monitoring is used to ensure that the pipeline is correct and is scalable next is logging and alerting Logs should be generated at each step of the pipeline and alerts should be set up to notify stakeholders when issues are detected. This allows for quick remediation of issues and can help to prevent further problems for overcoming or curing. Model retraining. Last point of this. H model retraining is a critical component of MLOps as it ensures that machine learning models continue to provide accurate and reliable predictions over time. Model retraining involves updating the machine learning model with new data either by retraining the model from scratch or by fine tuning the existing model. Model retraining can help address issues such as data drift where the distribution of characteristics of data used to train the model have been changed over time. Model retraining can also help address model drift where the model's performance has decreased over time due to changes in business environment data or algorithms. Model retraining should be integrated into the machine learning pipeline and should be automated to ensure that the model is updated in a timely manner. Strategies for model retraining can include batch retraining where the model is retrained periodically on new data or online learning where the model is updated continuously as new data becomes available. Model retraining should also be 
need by rigorous testing and validation to ensure that the updated model continues to meet business requirements and performance criteria. Effective model retraining can improve the accuracy and reliability of the machine learning models, reduce the risk of errors and biases, and ultimately lead to better business outcomes. Model retraining can also involve updating the model architecture or algorithm to improve its performance or adapt to new business requirements. <coughs> the frequency of model retraining will depend on the nature of the problem and the rate of change in the underlying data in business environment. So we can summarize model retraining as follows. As data changes over time, it may be necessary to retrain the model to ensure that it continues to perform well. Monitoring can help to identify when retraining is necessary. So we can summarize pipeline monitoring as follows. Pipeline monitoring is a critical component of machine learning operations. It involves monitoring the end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline from data preparation to model retraining and deployment. This includes monitoring data quality, model performance, infrastructure logging and alerting and trade training. Thank you for this video.